Hi there, Hunger Games readers. I'm Suzanne Collins, and I'm so thrilled that The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is being published around the globe today. To kick things off, I wanted to share a passage from the new book with you. Chapter 3. The peacekeeper moved on to the second car and released the chains. The door slid open, revealing Jessup, the male District 12 tribute, squinting into the brightly lit station. Coriolanus felt a jolt run through him, and his body straightened in anticipation. Surely she would be with him. Jessup hopped stiffly to the ground and turned back to the train. Lucy Gray Baird stepped into the light, her cuffed hands half covering her eyes as they adjusted. Jessup reached up his arms and his wrists spread as wide as the chain on his restraints would allow, and she fell forward, letting him catch her by the waist and swing her to the ground in a surprisingly graceful move. She patted the boy's sleeve in thanks and tilted her head back to drink in the sunlight streaming into the station. Her fingers began combing through her curls, untangling the knots and picking out bits of straw. Coriolanus's attention turned for a moment to the peacekeepers, who were hollering threats into the train car. When he gazed back, Lucy Gray was staring directly at him. He started a bit, but then remembered that he was the only one on the platform besides the peacekeepers. The soldiers were cursing now as they hoisted one of their number into the train car to retrieve the reluctant tributes. It was now or never. He crossed to Lucy Gray, extended the rose, and gave a small nod. Welcome to the capital, he said. His voice was slightly gravelly as he had not spoken for hours, but he thought it gave him a nice maturity. The girl sized him up, and for a minute he feared she was going to either walk away or, worse, laugh at him. Instead, she reached out and delicately plucked a petal from the flower in his hand. When I was little, they used to bathe me in buttermilk and rose petals, she said in a manner that, despite the unlikeliness of her claim, seemed totally believable. She ran her thumb over the glossy white surface and slipped the petal into her mouth, closing her eyes to savor the flavor. Tastes like bedtime. Coriolanus took the moment to examine her. She looked different than she had at the reaping. Except for flecks here and there, the makeup had been wiped away, and without it she appeared younger. Her lips were chapped, her hair loose, her rainbow dress dusty and rumpled. The mark from the mare's blow had turned to a deep purple bruise. There was something else, too. He again had the impression that he was witnessing a performance, but a private one this time. When she opened her eyes, she trained all her attention on him. You don't look like you should be here. I probably shouldn't be, he admitted, but I'm your mentor, and I wanted to meet you on my own terms, not the game makers. Ah, a rebel, she said. That word was poison in the mouths of capital citizens, but she had said it approvingly like a compliment. Or was she mocking him? He remembered she carried snakes in her pocket and the usual rules didn't apply to her. And what does my mentor do for me besides bring me roses, she asked. I do my best to take care of you, he said. She glanced over her shoulder, where the peacekeepers were tossing two half-starved children onto the platform. The girl broke a front tooth on the platform, while the boy received several sharp kicks on landing. Lucy Gray smiled up at Coriolanus. Well, good luck, gorgeous, she said, and walked back to Jessup, leaving him and his rose behind. <laughs>